In this episode of the online classroom, we're going to look at technical performance measures for my systems approach to a straightforward problem, keeping a lawn neat. Now technical performance measures, are often called the TPMs, are how we measure the attributes of our design. So this helps us understand uh, how we will measure and whether or not the design meets our customers' expectations. From the last online classroom, we had the ranks from the pairwise analysis and that showed that cuts grass was the most important and that reliable and durable came in fourth and fifth. So we're going to use these top five to develop into design attributes. So it turns out that three of the customer requirements we've already translated into design requirements and attributes in the customer requirements online classroom. So I've just translated what we had in that uh, video. So that leaves the last two, easy to use and durable, and here I've called easy to use as being minimal setup time, so it's the time it takes to get started perhaps, and the minimal number of setup steps. So you want to reduce that so that you don't have to go through a whole long procedure to start using the lawnmower. Uh, it should also be handled easily, so you don't, you don't want something that's too heavy or too difficult to move around the garden. And at number five, durable, we want to minimize incidental damage, so we don't want it to uh, crack if we run into something. And we also want to use high quality of parts to increase durability. So this gives us a complete table of the design attributes for the five most important customer requirements. There may be more if you wanted to go in more detail, but this serves us as a good start. But for the next section, we're really only going to look at the top two because when you translate them into engineering characteristics, it again expands it out too far. Uh, so we're just going to use the top two and translate them into the engineering characteristics or also the technical requirements. So the affecting cutting mechanism could be measured by a cutter coverage. So note that there's a plus sign here, which means we're looking to maximize cutter size. Though it's understood that there's some sort of natural limit to how big the cutter coverage is. Obviously we don't want a cutter coverage of say 10 meters squared because that might make the, the lawnmower too hard to push. But when it comes to our benchmark, we're trying to improve on our cutter coverage. Uh, an effective cutting mechanism might also mean cutter sharpness. So the sharper it is, I expect the easier it will be to cut grass. And likewise with cutter speed. Perhaps there's a trade-off there between cutter, cutter sharpness and cutter speed. Perhaps the sharper it is, the slower the cutter can be. But by itself, we want to increase the cutter speed. So it catches grass appropriately. Uh, you'll notice that in the catcher size, we have a bullet. And this is to indicate that this needs to be optimized to a certain value. So not too much over what we decide is the benchmark and not too much under. You could actually say the same thing about most of these requirements, but the subtle difference is that, for example, we will be looking to exceed the benchmark value for cutter coverage, but we want to optimize the catcher size. Uh, we also want to increase the catching area. So whatever, however the lawnmower catches the grass, we want it to grab as much as possible. Design requirement three, we're looking at safe for the users and passers-by, so we want to have an increased safety cover area and we want to increase the safety cover strength so we don't want perhaps it to be made of something that's really lightweight where perhaps rocks might tear through it and hurt people walking by and the second customer requirement which was to minimize the noise levels in operation we want to reduce the cutting system noise level so whatever the cutting mechanism is we want to reduce that noise level and we want to reduce the movement noise level so we don't want it to make a lot of sound when we push it along uh, and perhaps we also want to reduce the user pushing effort because if the user has a lot of frustration pushing it they might uh, yell out explosives and we don't want that as part of the noise levels okay so notice that the four design attributes have been translated into 10 engineering characteristics uh, perhaps they could have been broken up even further but i think this is a good start so then we go through and define a metric, which is the unit, and a TPM, which is the measurement. Here we're wanting to increase the cutter coverage, which is an area measured in meters squared. When we go to testing, it might also end up that there's a time element. So perhaps it's the area per minute. 
uh, might be a better measure of this characteristic, but we'll leave it as meter squared for the time being. Cutter sharpness could be measured in the force required to push um, to effectively get a cut. The cutter speed could be measured in revolutions per minute, the catcher size in meters cubed, and the catch opening area in meters squared. The safety cover area would be in meters squared. Uh, and the safety cutter strength should be could be measured in yield strength or, or another materials metric. I've chosen yield strength here because the idea is that we don't want the material to break. And lastly, for the noise, decibels to measure the noise levels and force to measure the uh, pushing effort. So this gives us our completed TPMs table and a recap of the key ideas for the TPM online classroom. So we take customer design attributes and translate them into engineering characteristics and each of the ECs have an associated metric. This will help us with uh, comparisons and benchmarking later on. Make sure you do the reading which is available on the course website for this topic and then do the self-test which is available on Waddle. See you next time.